And it's back into the action here after the CSGO update that delayed us. Welcome back, folks, to ESL Challenger League North America Season 43. Snake's Den versus Strife. Strife demolished Snake's Den on the pick of the Snake's Den. 16 to 2. Was in front of now. It's Strife's pick of Vertigo. But Pat's living it up on the 51st floor. Those initial two kills. Big. Julie's chimed in as well. But they're still fighting. They're still aggressing. And Infinite and Snakes, the two new kids on the block at Strife can pull this one off the clock's up close and personal this is not a round you can count out yet no definitely not and even right now oh my infinite okay he's able to get out of this the bomb's actually down though in favor here for the snake's den squad snake's just kind of creeping his way on the sidewalk here trying to see what they can make work of it they don't have any more utility so they're just gonna go for the firefight bomb's gonna be picked up that's one kill but it's only gonna be a one and done snakes nope gets eaten alive you see snakes then finally picking up a pistol round to get themselves with a nice juicy one zero it's the first lead snakes did have had all night it's a big pistol round for them to win it gives them a bit of a chance it gives them a bit of a boost here on the favored side of vertigo Strife only win about 39% of their t set in rounds on this map after all, so we can expect a solid CT side coming out from Snake's Den, unless things go much closer to how Inferno went. Yeah. Should be a second on the board, though, for Snake's Den here. Should not be too much trouble. Strife on the board. Front boost. And the no faith, no, no, the faith is gone. No, it's uh, it's gone. It's really just being removed. Yeah, okay, maybe a kill. No, not going to happen at all. Pat takes some damage, but Norm to foul, it's all good. So it's an easy breezy 2 0 here for Snake's Den. No bomb going to be planted. So there's going to be Galil's actually forced up here from the T side of Strife and Triple AK with double Galil. They're going in. They're going to try this one. I mean, this is a bit of a bonus, if you want to call it. Like, kind of. I mean, I would say, like, it's like a half bonus, maybe. But double Flamas, MP9s here from Snake's Den. So they're sitting good. They're sitting pretty. They're sitting good. They're sitting pretty. They're looking to get a third on the board here, Snake's Den. Strife. This is one you really need to learn. Stymie that momentum now. Don't let Snake's Den build into this matchup. You shut them down so effectively on map one, you have to do the same on map two. Or you let Snake's Den get back into this one mentally. And Strife for Punk is so slow right now. It's opening up opportunities for Snake's Den to take aggression, take information peaks elsewhere across the map. Strife are going to have to get going fast, because, yeah, there's still a lot of time on the clock, but they have to go towards B. There's only been utility really thrown towards A, and the rotations are going to be here to bolster this side of the map. Snake's Den can realistically hold this one down pretty easily, but Strife have decided to rotate over. They're going in towards B now. Do they get the boost up? Do they get it up silently? Do they get Infinite here to strike? It all really hinges on what Infinite can do. Good control, the nades are going to be thrown around now, Molotov's going to be placed, so Infinite's going to try to lead this one. Go some by with the team, now he's going to bombard this, Infinite does get that first initial duel, still putting a lot of pressure onto this point here, he's got some good control of this, he might be able to catch them off guard if they don't get them careful, he might be shot. So now Joel's able to find a second one, only losing Jitter so far, but a big Bomb flank down. coming in from Pab, that's a good kill. That's huge, but Infinite and Joel's, they strike right back. Infinite might be 1 HP, but Snakes has the ring around the rosy. Pat goes down, and Strife will strike right back here. Get their first on the board very early. First gun round converted. Snakes then, of course, going to buy up again. Strife will have a couple more Galils into this round, from the looks of things. Actually, no, no, three AKs, two Galils still. Snakes will drop Jitter over. So they will be fine. Gun shuffles going around on the T side. Three Famases, no defuse kits. And utility, it's not terrible. It's also not great for Snake's Den. Strife gonna try and burn through that as best they can. Options for Strife now to really turn the tide early, get off to a bit of an early lead. This is a weak side here, too, for Strife. I mean, their T side is about, like you said, 39%. This isn't their strongest point. So when 
can kind of look things over here for uh, the CT side here of Snake's Den. It's about a 40... No, hang on. I'm wrong. It's not as good. It's definitely not as high, but it is about a 43% win rate on the CT as well. And right now, Stripe again just kind of going slow and steady, trying to get a little bit of map control, getting some feelers, trying to figure out what they want to go for. But are going to go for that boost one more time. Wreck going to be able to get the boost for his team, and I believe that's Jitter. If they can get this kill box, I mean, this could just open up the site pretty quickly. Reason's been spotted, but he also does some spotting as well. Infinite has the bomb, and Infinite has the opening head shot. That's going to spur them onto the site. Utility going to flood on through. DJF here to try and hold the line around green. The smoke will force him away. The bomb can get planted now. No counter utility left for Snake Den either. That's an issue. That's going to be a five man hold for Strike. It's going to be a save ball after that secondary kill coming in from the T side. Jitter does get taken down. Joel's up close to personal, knows where Promise is, just dancing back and forth, trying to get the kill. Promise now swings out wide, the smoke to cover, 3v3, but he takes a lot of damage, and they know where they're going to the kill. They don't have the idea where the next player is, though. Infinite and Joel's go one for one, going down to low HP Promise, and down he falls, 2-2 two, two on the score. Money a little bit able to be built up now for Strife, and no money for Snake's Den. Pistols will be there by, and Strife... They should be able to get their lead now. They should be able to get their third, barring any pistol heroics, any pistol miracles. And will they even upgrade a pistol on the Snake's Den side? It doesn't look like it. It's going to be stock USPs across the board. No purchases at all. It's a pretty good call. I mean, every other player is just sitting around like just over that $2,000 mark. So if they go for the pistol investment, it definitely makes a big hinder on the money situation. So this is a good call. Not a situation you want to be in. A little cheeky nade doesn't really do much, but one damage across pretty much the board against for most players on Snake's Den, so more about style points. Jitter actually takes a bit of molly damage for himself. He'll fall back. And this is a good stack. This is what we saw before, a five-player commitment, the pyramid. They're hanging out. They're trying to get a little uh, creative. Got to be creative when it comes to a pistol run like this. You don't really have the ability to fight your way out of the situation, so you gotta go with something a little bit cheeky, you know. Maybe you gotta go for an alley-oop pass over the back of the net. Pull off a of Michigan. You never know. But something's gotta be interesting. And that push. It's just looking for information. Doesn't get anything at all. Wreck actually only goes for one, though. That's a problem. The bomb is still so far removed from the overall situation over towards A. It's gonna be recovered by Joel's and brought back. Should be a clean round for Strife, despite losing that AK on Wreck, especially if they can take it back out of the hands of Promise. I think that's now mission number one for the T-side. Don't let them save a free Kalashnikov. But other than that, this round has pretty much played out as we anticipated. Pretty smooth for Strife. Yeah, big, a big loss, though, losing that AK. Like you said, Promise, if, he can, if he's able to hold on to this thing for the next round, that's going to be a big bonus. Now Snake's trying to go for this charge. I like this. I mean, it's kind of unnecessary, but he's got the Mac 10 so it's not a huge investment being lost. But I think Strife and now realize, let's not even bother. This isn't worth it. Which is a good call. But a lot's going to come into this next round, but Strife now put themselves in the lead position, like you said, with that 3-2. And I'll be curious to see if we're going to see that creative, you know, play here from Strife being a little bit more fast-paced or kind of mixing up the playbook a little bit more like what we saw in Inferno. We didn't get to see too much of Strife's T side on Inferno. Yeah, it was more the CT side. Yeah, it was more yeah. the CT side. Now, I'm not too sure who's calling for Strife. I assume it's Joel's. That's kind of my thought, too. Like, maybe Joel's. I, I, I doubt it was Wreck, but. He is team captain, and I don't think they'd. They wouldn't have Jitter calling. They probably wouldn't have Infinite or Snakes calling either. So it's just more of a what does Joel's have up his sleeve on this map? Because it looks pretty standard defaulty right now. Leaving Wreck to lurk, actually, interestingly enough. When you have Infinite, you have Wreck. I, I would have assumed they would just have Infinite lurking everywhere. Yeah, that's what he's known for. Mm -hmm. It's what he really excelled at on Party Astronauts 2, which I believe was his previous roster to this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he's on top of the scoreboard, too, right now. I mean, he's sitting at a 6-2. and two. Doing quite well. 
Chewie getting a bit exposed, but he's still able to find this kill, so gets a good initial start. So winning that opening duel here from CT side. Stripe again just kind of holding W. Creeping their way to get some nice control. But there it is. Promise a reason. Both of them a nice one, two, and there it is. Already at a five on two situation. And no real response from Strife either. Just this defaulting dry peeking is not working at all. There is no real utility set play. There's no real coordination. It's kind of just okay, uh, so and so is going to peek. And as the previous four engagements worked, it did not for Strife. They get one kill, and that's all. A flat round for Strife with an opportunity to build their lead. They still have money, yes. But. Honestly, I feel like a timeout needs to be called because this T side is very one note. It's very flat. It's two dimensional on the most vertical map in the game. Yeah, that it is. And I mean, this again, the, the, the T side here for Stripe, it's not the strongest that they've had on this map, despite their record and everything like that being a three and three. But I mean, I think for them, as long as they can kind of build off and build some more rounds, they're going to feel a little bit more comfortable going in that CT side. But like you said, it is looking a little flat in terms of the executions, but more of that default situation that we're seeing. But it could just be the new roster, new iteration of the IGL, kind of getting comfortable with himself and the team. Nice little spray. Doesn't do too much damage, but it's still a good use of the silenced M4 there from Chewy. Strife doing the same thing again. This time it's infinite on the lurk towards B. It's not wreck. But the same general premise applies to their setup. It's a lurk towards stair. Actually, no, wreck is the one lurking over towards B. Where's infinite? And where did... St oh, Stink's got the ramp pick. That's a big one. That's over towards yellow and side hall. Mm -hmm. Opening pick can really open up space on this map. Snakes then are going to have to be careful not to overextend. And as I say, that promise is creeping forward. And Pat was thinking about aggressing too. Snakes is still on the prowl, and just around the edge of the smoke, he's got this lined up. Infinite caught on the lurk, though. If Strife want to hit A, they have to go now. There is no time. 25 seconds. They must push. They must go balls to the wall here. Throttle all the way forward. Half got a line up, splits the goalpost, kicks a field goal. As both Pat and Promise go down, Bob will get planted momentarily. Rex shuts down a reason, and DJF probably just should opt for the save here because there is no winning this 1v4. Uh, saving the AK a lot more valuable to a fledgling CT economy. Yeah, the fact that the double players, you know, on, from the Strife side swung and won that duel on the sidewalk, that was huge. I mean, I was thinking that Snake's then maybe would a bare minimum to get that trade. But there it is. I mean, Strafe now put themselves back in that lead position. And they get themselves to a 4-3. The money is its not the greatest situation. I mean, Promise does have 5,400. Could try to go for the, you know, the hero op maybe. Try something a little bit to work around it if they want. But it's just not worth it this early in the game, in my opinion. Yeah, they'll go for the Deegs and the pistols. It's the right call. Yeah, you kind of got to go for the half buy here. You can't really fully invest if you want to have a real significant chance at winning rounds. This should be a fifth on the board for Strife, which is going to be a solid T half for them at this point. They need to get a little bit more, though, if they really want to put the pressure on Snake's Den. Wreck with the entry. Good flash from Infinite. Jitter chimes in as well. The pistol is not really doing much damage on Snake's Den side. Wreck. There's another nice headshot before the Molotov even can bloom on jump. So just Pat and Chewie left alone. Pat can probably just save the Kevlar and go in with a bit stronger of a buy in the next round. And for Chewie, just try and grab a gun. 5-7 up close and personal. Never a fun thing to run into. Pat! There's one. Can't have to the rifle, though. It did drop back down. Wreck takes a lot of damage. But three shots to the chest with the Deagle. It's two to the stomach and one to the head. Don't ask me why it's three to the chest and two to the stomach. But that's how the body shot mechanics work for the Deagle, in case you've ever wondered why you're hitting somebody 97 and 2 with it. It's exactly what happened there to Pat was, was at 87 and 2, because they're both chest shots. Yeah. Oh dear. Okay. There we go. Fifth round going to be obtained here from Strife. 
Lots of funds now available, like we said. I mean, now Promise is sitting at 7,300. We should be able to see that up. There it is. Yeah, not even a not even a hesitation. It was instant purchase, ready to go. But we need to see something a little bit different here from Snake's Den. I mean, we saw before they, you know, got that first pick, or that first opening duel, I should say, on the ramp. That was great, I mean, giving them the man advantage. But then Stripe have been able to win these duels in these last couple rounds and kind of getting that first engagement. So we need to see Snake's Den finding that opportunity for that first initial duel. It really can go a long, right? a long way. Back to that default situation again. Just slow and steady wins the race here in the Strife camp. Getting a feeler, just trying to see if Snake Stand are going to be aggressive at all. Actually, Promise does look like he's playing quite aggressive through middle. So he's got a good post up. Wreck just kind of lurking things out, getting a bit of a feeler. Jitter, okay. I was thinking if he's going for that peak, he's dead right. Look at this, Joel's dangerous. Oh, he just missed that head too. A very dangerous game with Striper playing. They, if they lose the opening pick instead of get it, it puts them in such a more difficult situation. And even now, they've not cleared Chewie out. Infinite's got a general idea, but nobody's actually clearing out Side Hall. Strife are almost getting bailed out by their firepower right now. And. It's almost in spite of the general strategy, because Snakes are playing a perfect counter to a default, right? They're holding angles, Pat's going to get the free kill there. No utility, Stripe peaks on dry peaks, and at this level, you are going to win most of your dry peak fights if you are on the defensive side of that duel. That's such a good point, too, because again, Stripe, we were talking a lot about the firepower. Definitely starting to show a little bit here in comparison to Snakes then, so now they get themselves that bomb down. Man advantage here for Snake's End, though. So, again, they still have quite a bit of utility. They have lots of flashes, a mully, and an HE. So, they can use it to get themselves in that retake situation. Flash is being thrown everywhere. Snakes needs to get a big bite. He will not. It's not going to have any sort of a bite at all. Joel's now on the sand base. He's going to get pushed out by the mully. He still goes for the fight. Able to win the one. And there it is. Snake's then able to get this defuse. Should be fine. And they pick up uh, their cells of four. It's a good fourth. They hold the line very well. They do surrender a bomb plant, but they keep three alive. More importantly, that's better for the economy of the Snake's Den side. Allows them to build up a more, bit more of a bank. It allows them to build a bit more confidence. And I almost want to see Snake's Den keep on playing the slow, just default, hold your line style of CT side. Because a lot of times with Vertigo, you get tempted to go take an aggressive peek, especially towards A. If Strife are just going to sit back and wait, make them push. Make them take the fights. Make them go aggressive. That reason is going to go one for one. That causes problems. Now, mid has to be abandoned. DJF needs to do it all alone on the site. But Pat is spotted and mowed down by Joel's. I believe he might have spotted the next player in line, too. Pat has struck for one. Pat's been good so far. Very good on this map. Behind the flame, Pat will roast. EV2 with the bomb still yet to go down, but Snakes can have the players here on the rotation. Strife are down to barely any utility as well. It's going to come down to the firefights. And back down to three on two. The man advantage now in favor for Strife. A good nade does some good damage onto Infinite. So now Chewie just kind of waiting on the. So trying to see what he can do. The flash is coming in. Gonna get some good control. He does get caught a little bit. Oh, they have no idea. And there it is. Joel's able to get that kill so he can still hide to be a bit of a smoke criminal. And promise. Oh my god, he wins that fight with one <laughs> HP to spare. Yippee Kaye. And that's gonna be an off saved. At the cost of just almost losing his life. But they need this off to go into this next round, though, Boggs. Promise is so lucky to get out of that one alive, though. Saving the op. That's phenomenal there. Yeah, with one HP. That's living one. right. Yeah. The only thing is, the general team isn't living right. They've given up six rounds to a T-side Vertigo. And what they have to fight with in this round is an op and a Deagle. Unless there's a hero play from Promise... This is a seventh for Strife. And if you get seven rounds on your chase out of Vertigo, you should be 
And Jitter's already got the ultimate. That's the Deagle player. Promise is roasting 23 HP. Still strikes onto infinite. But now they know where the op is. The op is also significantly lower on health. And I don't know if that was necessarily the smoke Jitter wanted. I was going to ask you, like, was that honestly the lineup? Was that on purpose so that he can get on this it boost? could be, actually. What's Jitter's view right now? Let's go back. Let's take oh, a look. Oh, it could have been, actually. I don't yeah, think I've seen that all too often, but that does look like a blunder. one way. Yeah, it is like a bit of a one way. I was thinking it was a bit of a blunder, and I was like, no, surely you would have known. But yeah, that's actually pretty cheeky. I think you just bought it. They were a little bit further back. Oh, man, he's definitely made his presence known. I don't think he realizes somebody's close on by. Wreck with a nice shot onto Chewy. Yeah, Wreck just doing Wreck things, and he's just running around. And he's just fragging out. And that AWP is gone. It's gone to an HE, and it gets picked up. Reason does grab it, but now he's going to have to keep it alive. Timing. <laughs> Timing what it all comes down to, right? I mean, well, Snakes is ready for this, though. If Reason walks into the wrong angle, eh? Uh, never mind. Snakes has gone back towards A. I, for I didn't realize the bomb hadn't gone down yet. I thought they'd gotten the bomb down so long ago. <laughs> no, they've been really overthinking this. Like, you can see, yeah. they think he's somewhere close on by to deny the plant. Even though he's just dipped. Yeah, he is really just dipped out of this. He's like, yeah, no, I'm good. I'm, I don't want to do this. I don't yeah, want to be on no, this ride. Not fighting this today. Uh, I got something I need to save into the next round. So uh, have fun with the bomb plant. Have fun with the round. Uh, also, if you guys think you're, if you guys want to jump at shadows, that helps us. <laughs> it helps nobody but snakes that have strife want us jump at shadows in a one in a four v one up against pistols. And I think it just shows a lack of comfort for Strife on the T side. Especially on this map. I mean, we didn't really get to see the T side. Either. Ooh, reason. Maybe it would have been better just to stay alive. Don't shoot that, bud. Because they're hunting. They're on the prowl. Wow. One extra second. And reason's dead. Whew. Okay. Sweats off the brow a little bit here. They get that off. Still in the rotation. I mean, this is kind of the saving grace. It needs to be. We'll have to see Promise kind of light things up. We did actually get a little bit of a glimpse of that on map number one. We, he has some pretty good shots with the AWP. We need to see a little bit more. But Strife looking pretty dominant so far. 7-4. One more round and they've secured this first half. Guaranteed. And right back at it. Nice slow round. Chewy actually getting a little bit more aggressive. Like you said, these CTs starting to put... Just a tiny bit of pressure on it. There's going to be double players in the mid. They're going to just look for this. And I think DJF will be the first person. Yeah, he's dead. Good night. Sweet dreams. It's a good trade, though. Back and forth. Good trades, but those favor the T's, and that happens to be Strife at this moment in time. Promise holding a deep angle to mid. Smoked off. Hits the timing on the wreck, though. Mad advantage back for Snake's Den. Pat going over top. He spotted the gun of Infinite, who cannot reattain the target. So Snake's Den just picking apart Strife one by one as Strife continue their defaulting tactic. Now, Snake's then taking a little more aggression with it, peeking into angles after getting the man advantage, using utility to facilitate peaks as well, as evidenced by that last kill. And Snake's now the last one standing. Might just toss the op out of the map. Would not be a bad idea. Yeah, I think he can go for the save, though, too. I mean, he could just try to preserve He's this thing. he got a lot of money. They do, but I mean, at the same time, I mean, Rex 31, Joel's with 3,200. It's, it's, plus wanna... losses, plus 1,400. Well, yeah. It'd be nice to keep this thing alive if you can. Yeah, maybe. He's got mm. that utility, too. Yeah, the util makes it... Well, I mean, the util, he can just, like, try and save, but... Because if he dies with the op, it's a double op setup for free for Snake's Den. That's that the thing true. I'm apprehensive about. Yeah, it doesn't look like they're going to go for this push. I thought they were maybe going to try to go for a hunt, but they're going to play this a bit more passive. They'll take this round. They'll, they'll be happy with it. Only losing one casualty on their side. Round 13, though, now. And like you said, the 1,900 loss bonus getting kicked in here for uh, for Strife. Should be enough for them to have another gun round. But if they lose this next round, this could really uh, kind of affect the money situation a little bit here for the T's. 
like you said, Boggs, I'd really like to see Snake Sting kind of put a little bit more pressure on the CT side. Just again, just try to make Strafe a little bit more uncomfortable. It's a good need we're coming in just to slow things down just a tiny bit. Nothing crazy. And Strafe right back at it, man, holding that W. Trying to be silent assassins. Now they're going to go put the pedal to the metal. And they catch Reason in rotation. Just sitting there with, I think, his knife out trying to reposition. And that's going to be his undoing. No counter to this B take either. Strife, they go for an actual exec. And it takes out every bit of defense Snakeston had put up. The player jump off the player mid have to be forced away by the utility. That opening pick works out well with a ball off the flash that got to the site. The further utility as they scaled on forward. That is why sometimes, especially on Vertigo, you just want to take the fights. And it works for Stripe. They've done 12 rounds prior of defaulting in slow paced play. This one's going to get them an eighth, unless something special happens. Promise, there's a nice one, but it's all down to Promise now in a 1v3, and Stripe don't have to peek. Promise knows that, and Promise has pulled the plug back and away. Eight now to Stripe and the half. Only a few more rounds to go. Two to be exact for this one. Strife with a chance for a 10-5, moving into the stronger side of this map. Oh, they're hunting too, promise. Oh, he does get that sh that shot. Oh, no! Not like this, promise. Oh, right down the last second, like you said, the big flank. Good teamwork coming in from Strife. A little bait and switch. Shake and bake. Man. Bake themselves up an eighth round and gets that op removed. Yes, they got enough that they can purchase it again, but it's just unfortunate because DJF now has to go with an MP9 later on that utility. Yeah, the lack of utility is going to be a big thing to keep an eye on. Pat, though, starts it off well. Aggressive peek on the jitter. Catches the segmented attack of Strife is the default around the map. Snake's also taking a large chunk of damage, down to 17 HP. Joel's hoping for an overextension, but Snake's done doing a good job of tempering their aggression, getting their pick, and then backing away. As it stands right now, Snake's has a massive advantage in this engagement. And Snake's can find no return, as it's just a passive hold coming in from Snake's Den now, as they have all the advantages they need. Yeah, really allowing for pretty much Stripe to get some map control, though, if they want. Double player here towards B from the Snake Den side. Strife again. You know, the old recipe. Let's just walk everywhere. And there it is. Oh, my God. A dry swing. Just chewy. Okay. All right. Nice little nibble. This is where Strife need to put a little bit more foot on the gas now. They need to get something back to get some kills. Wreck might be able to find something. Oh, there it is. Oh, that trigger discipline. Oh, oh, man, I promise. He is able to get that kill, but my goodness, his teammates are probably a little frustrated for losing two like that. That's going to yeah. be a six gained. That's brutal. And it's the same problem for Strife, Les. It's the same problem. They default too much. And well, I was going to say, like, not to cut you off, but I was going to say round 13, I think it was. I mean, that was a really nice setup where they were going a little bit slow, and then they just did this, like, quick pop. Yeah. Like, they popped right into the It was the, a contact play. Yeah, it really was, and I loved it. I thought that was a lot better, but I agree with you. Definitely the pacing needs to increase a little bit here from Strife. Yeah, the pacing, it's just been the same thing for 14 or 13 out of 14 rounds. And it's been default. Segment the same default positions every single time, by the way. And when they go for a contact explosion, it worked. Wreck caught on the lurk again towards stairs. As the tail of the tape continues, Promise with an aggressive peek down. We'll go back for more. He gets punished, but the damage is done. Oh, Pat, that's an unnecessary aggressive peek. That opens up a door now for Strife. Chewie tries to back away. Caught off guard. Snakes and Joels are low, and both are holding on to ops. But the bomb can now go down on the eighth site as utility floods on through. There's a mid flank from Jitter, too, that can catch them off guard. The flames will force them away. This just gives the rotation more and more time to come through here. 
But Strife are going to back their way back towards the B side as Jitter can just sit here. And it's not really read by reason either. Had the right general idea, but the wrong answer to the equation. Now just DJF and a 1v3, the last round of this half. He's made the right read. There's too many players to find. The bomb going down. And snakes will put him in the ground. 9-6 to six in the favor of Strife. We'll see you on the other side of the break. Strife crawled their way to a ninth round on the T side. It was a very defaulty, very methodical start for Strife. Snakes 10. They had a good setup, but they got overwhelmed with the firepower of Strife in the end. I'm Bong, because he's last. This is ESL Challenger League Season 43 in North America. Strife now, seven rounds away from salting this match away, going up to 1-0 on the season, dropping Snakes into an 0-3 record. Look all the utility strife have too. Snakes, a kit, a flash, a smoke, and an HE infinite with another nade. There's a lot of util for the CT side. But what can they do to counter the mid pop? There's only one player really here. 
Yeah, it's going to be a tough situation here for Jules. I mean, he's going to have to... Yeah, he does kind of change his position, which I like this. So, again, he can just go for that jiggle. He can just kind of pull back if he needs to. The reason... Okay. He's got some good ground. He's just kind of going for a stroll. He's like, hey, I like this map. I like the scenery. I like what I'm looking at. Nobody around. Got this place up for myself. Oh, wait, hang on. There's imposter here. <laughs> Ooh. Infinite. Oh, oh wow! Look at that swinging. That's uh, that's interesting. That's one way to put it. That's oh, interesting. How describe that? Wow. The flood down, jump up. Joel's comes up empty-handed. Infinite's gonna rotate in, try and get some backstabbing action in. Jitter is on the stairs, and it's a complete and total game reversal of the roles for these teams. That's a that's a whip and a half right there from Jitter. Rack is still there for the one. The bomb does go down, though. That's a victory for the T side in and of itself. Rack looking for another head, having to dash away with that USP wideout. Navi hollows are really nice on that, actually. I really like the way that looks, but the skin can look as pretty as it wants. Strife need the kills. And their shots necessarily have not been the prettiest so far in this round. JF dancing around green. Rex still spamming away. It's all down to him now. Kit should be down on the site, at least in the vicinity. Where did Snakes die? He had that one. Nice secondary shot from Rex. He has to get the kit. He has to get the kill. Oh, he's, he's a kid on the time. left. Oh, no. He doesn't know where the kid is. No. Oh, no. Anyways. Oh, I think it was a miscom. Somebody must have calmed. It's right by generator, and he's looking around like, well, I don't see it. Bruh. It's on the other side, but effort's there. F for the defuse, though. Uh, that's just a lot of whiffed shots coming out from the strife side in critical situations. To they're going to force trap. up here. Wreck, because of those kills, is able to get an M4. Deagles and 5.7s dot around the rest of the squad. A good amount of utility, all things considered, for strife. I mean, it's not what you would want on a full buy round, but considering what they have in terms of firepower, it can definitely work. No, nope. they do have a kit too, so it's not a bad setup to force buy into this one from Strife. Wreck needs these kills, though. He's got to play bait and switch. He's got a teammate down on the lower angle. He's got the first and the section. Never mind, it's Jitter with both of those kills. The Deagle. He hits one and two, and now Strife. They're in the driver's seat of the round. Snake's Den, no real room to move on this map. Just hitting dingers, eh, bud? Oh, yeah, bud. Ripping them top cheddar -y. Just rip them on top cheddar -y. Now, we're going to have to see if uh, Snake's Den is going to be able to get any sort of a shot on top cheddar. Because, uh, I mean, they're down to three. Got a little bit of nades that they can still work with. A nice molly. They'll uh, flush this one player out. Smoke's being placed. This is going to be a little bit of a problem on the mission side of things. Jitter, my god. Okay, it works, but he's down to 12. Down to a 5 on 2. Got some wounded members here from the Strife team. 38 seconds remaining, so Snake's down again. They have time, but they're going to need to move quickly if they want to go for this execute. But they're running into a full stack. I mean, they are at the wrong party. They are not invited to this one. Yeah, this is not the party they're looking for. It's a dead man's party. You leave your body and soul out the door. The Molotov, honestly, just, just should just signal a save. And I think that's what Snake's done have in mind now. They're going to back away. Not going to contest this at all. Saving two Galils is ugly. AKs, sure. No, they die after time. One dies after time. Oh, no. Oh. Just when I thought it could get worse. It yeah. got worse. It got a little bit worse. And I mean, right even right now for Strife, again, even losing, I mean, they can, or losing a player like that, I mean, they can still get MP9s. They can still scrap some cash. And uh, Snake's then they got one rifle now. They're supposed to have two. But not the case anymore. They're, looks like they may actually go quite aggressive in middle. Oh, my God. Jitter actually gets an A kill. He's trying to get something with a molly. Good need work. And there it is. <laughs> nice little roast. Oh, man. What is going on? Chaos, pandemonium, insanity. All the words. Yes. Yes to all three. All the above. Backpack. And wreck. Oh, my. Okay. 
Oh, I'll do? He saw the backpack. He knew. He knew. Okay. Well, we, uh, 53 HP is a combination here for Snake's Den. That and eight can kill them both. Yeah, it sure can. Oh, they're just going to wide swing this too. Oh, my nade this goodness. Joles. Nade this, Joels. Get the Throw double away. nade. Get the double nade. Do it. Aw. All right, well, you get himself a nice money bonus right there, so he'll take it. I guess it's more money, but the nade kill would have been cooler. Yeah, I mean, listen, like, it would have been a lot cooler and flashier. But whatever, you know what? Do it the cool, safe way. That's fine. Do it That's the fine. economically savvy way. Fine. We'll just sit here in our Lamborghinis with the nade kills. <laughs> Lamborghinis. Snakes? Uh, or are you more of a okay. McLaren guy? Yeah, McLaren's. Yeah, all right. All right. I can vibe with that. I can vibe with that, too. <laughs> it's better than my Honda Civic. I mean, if you could kit out a Honda Civic. That's true, you could. You could really kit one of those things out. If you really Ooh. wanted to. That's a chunky Ooh. boy. It's real chunky. Another main or another roller coming in, too. Oh, no. Actually, surprisingly, this isn't as much of a slaughter as you think it would be. I mean, they've lost two people. Infinite, infinite. Oh, good God, he lost it to a Glock. That's three okay. Glock kills. Yeah, this is... I don't even know what to say anymore. I'm lost uh, for words. Bad. Help me. What is this is this is completely avoidable. There we go. And really bad for the CT economy. Yeah, that was a round. They should not have given up that many guns. No. I mean, I, I understand they they're trying to, you know. fight that either. That's the thing. Yeah, we've seen that a couple times in in this series is that there's been some unnecessary fights actually from both teams. It's not, this isn't even just a Stripe thing. We saw even Snake's Den going for some peaks that they shouldn't be going for, but Stripe are trying to end this thing quickly, I think. Yeah, I mean, if you want to end it quickly, play proper Counter-Strike. It's the oh, best man. way to secure a round. Yeah, that's true. Shots fired. I like that. I mean, it's like you can try and rush to victory all you want, but you're going to make more mistakes, which leads to opportunities for the other team to win around. The fastest way to victory is minimizing mistakes and capitalizing on those given to you. It's like, sure, you can go for a drop pass all you want, but if you try to puck in the deep zone, they're going to score. <laughs> sure, it looks nice if it works, but when it doesn't work, it bites you in the rear end. Strife almost got bit in the rear end from that one, and it still could bite them because of the fact that they had to reinvest so much money into this round to get a full buy. Rex is going to get a good opening kill on a dry peak from Reason, but they're still in the danger zone here, and Snakes didn't have an opportunity to strike if they can isolate some fights and get the bomb down. Yeah, now we're starting to see Snake's Den putting that, you know, a little bit of a slow little uh, pace onto this T side. A lot of hesitation that there's, we're starting to notice. This is what we were criticizing a bit for Strife. Snake's in a good position right now, playing behind that sandbag. Just kind of waiting for his out. Oh, man. He does get that one kill, but he's fine a little bit more. But Infinite's able to help him out. Now they're just going to go for a big old swing, and there it is. That's a good execution there. 13-7 now. We're going to be seeing just the pistols come into fruition here for Snake's Den, probably. And I would hope we get something a little bit quicker, Box. Yeah, that was a much better round from Strife, too. They don't overextend. Mm -hmm. They don't stick around for fights they don't need to. They peak. They have teammates there for trades, for utility support, for taking the swing. And that, if they did that against the pistols, they'd maybe lose one guy. Yeah. It's just those little details that... It can be a bit nitpicky, but for a team like Strife that wants to be challenging for playoffs in a spot at conference, those are the little things you're going to have to shore up before it even gets to playoff time, or even if you're going to have a chance to get to playoffs. It gets pretty tight towards the top. It's only four spots in playoffs, and there's not much that separates the playoff teams from the teams that sit down in the relegation zone. So you got to make sure you have the opportunity to. There's a nice little swing from Joel's out from Sandbags and Reason, the last one standing. Shouldn't be around. Nick Dry Peaking punishes that. Two more rounds for Strife, and this one is in their favor. 16-2, 16-7.
Could be the way, but this is going to be the possibly one of the last gun rounds that we're probably going to see, or potentially strong gun rounds that we'll be seeing here from Snake's End. So a lot on the line here. Round number 22. No op here for Stripe. They're actually just going to full commit to AKs and the M4, uh, the M4A1Ss. So, I mean, this is uh, a bit interesting. We normally like to see, you know, someone have the op. Not going to be the case here for Stripe. They broke, don't fix it, I guess. And, uh, well, I don't know. Pat, Pat made something big here. Nice little bit of an opener. And actually get the man advantage they can reset this uh little bit of a composition on the attack and even stripe they have to kind of figure out what they want to do for this defense aggression now into middle for strife pat setting up a molotov looks back it's timinged and down to one hp not the first time we've seen a snake den player sitting on that one solitary point of health and it will not last for long for Pat, mowed down by the aggression, and later they fall away. A good time to push into this 4v4. still holding behind the pillar, but DJF, a nice Haven't little drive him. by Wreck, only able to get one DJF with a pad on a swivel. He's still alive and kicking. Trade on the Jitter? No, not yet. How is Jitter alive still? How is Jitter still alive to get out of this alive? And with snakes on the flanks. Another round of the bird. Right early. Bomb goes down. That's all she wrote. 15-7 match point to strife. There's a snake in my boot. And I mean, look <laughs> at that. Like, big flank. I love it, Jitter. I don't know, man. He's got some moves. He's just, I don't even know how he survived that. That was just pandemonium. That was nuts. Yeah, pandemonium craziness. This map does lead itself to crazy flanks and crazy plays. But I think Strife are just wait, riding the wave of momentum and kind of just hitting, having better firepower. Most of what they've been doing has been carried by superior firepower. Their T side was by the aim. Most of it was dry swings into angles. And even now on the CT side, a lot of it's getting two kills in the place where it should be a one and one, one and done. So, Strife. CT side has been a lot more shored up, but I think the overall coordination needs to be worked on heavily if they want to have a chance to move forward through this season against some of the better competition. I mean, Team 1's in their group, MIBR, EG Black. It's not an easy group, but Wreck, he's got the first, Snakes with the second, only three more to find, and Jitter, he's in a bit of an awkward spot. He can get caught. Sort of a flank rotation cover. Can't be eliminated, but Pat only goes one for one. DJF has to get the trade. Infinite takes a dink through the wall. Backed away. And DJF caught by the side player. All down to promise now. And if I'm him, I'm not promising this clutch. Yeah, this is a big ask. This is a lot to get out of this player right now. 59 HP. Does have a you know full belt of utility ready to go, but I, again, you just got four players to go against. Does have the bomb. Yep. Nothing more than that. There it is. Stripe going to be taking this thing. A nice 2-0 showing us a dominant performance on both maps, like you said. And uh, pretty impressive, all things considered. Yeah, Stripe showed up their first match of the season. Not really showing too much rust, particularly on Inferno. They wiped the floor with Snake's 10, 16-2. Vertigo, a little bit tougher. I mean, they did start on the T side. So that is part of it. T side, Vertigo, very difficult. CT side, much easier. But they 